Today's video is brought to you by Happy Little Hug Factory. Make sure to stop by and check them out. Hello everyone and welcome to Opus 7 Fire Review. Uh, I'm Emo Tempest. I have today the lovely <laughs> RBA returners, uh, Chris and Adam. Say hi guys. What's up, uh, man? <laughs> Flattery will get you everywhere, sir. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Uh, I wish that worked for everything in life. <laughs> uh, but today we're going to be talking about uh, all the Opus 7 Fire cards. There's a couple to talk about. Um, I chose the RVA Returners. For those who don't know them, these guys are great players. I've had the, the pleasure of playing with them very often. Uh, I know we do live a little worlds away, but these guys are great. I wholly trust their opinions on these cards. So I hope you guys will too. Um, so I think we should just get started with that. Uh, we're going to go... Uh, I guess in numerical order, the way the fire cards are printed. And the first one we have is Orin. Uh, four cost, uh, category 10 forwards, you control gain brave. You can tap Orin to choose a blocking forward. It gains 1,000 power until the end of the turn. Uh, I'll start Chris here for this one. Chris, what are your thoughts? Um, I think the card's fine. He's very reminiscent of Cyan, like how he is for category 6. The only downside here is... I, I really wish he did more. Like, I really wish they could have given him an S ability. Um, I, I don't know how much play he's going to see. I think I don't know if Guardians are good enough to warrant him seeing play. But I'm not sure. I, I, I think he'll see as much play as Cyan currently does, if that makes sense. Yeah, I agree. Uh, that was my original um, take on him, too. So, uh, we've already had a couple of days to play with this set already for everyone. Yep. And uh, I haven't seen a whole full-on Guardian deck myself yet. Um, mm -hmm. To that sign regard, though, I think the fact that he's uh, going to be able to buff the Thousand might make him a little more playable than Cyan. Because uh, sure. Cyan had an S ability, um, but uh, still, the Brave thing wasn't enough for us wanting to play him, right? Exactly. Okay. Uh, Adam? Yeah, um, I think he's the best Auron they printed. Uh, I don't know if that matters that much. <laughs> no, but, but... You, I thought we liked the other orange to so throw down the, the any fire back up. Uh, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> no. I did that one time, but then that was, it went right back in the binder. Um, no, I mean, he's okay, but I just I, I don't think that archetype is good enough. Um, I think he'll be good at title. So. Yeah, that's cool. I can see that too, title. Um, so I guess when we're talking about these cards too, I do want to cover all that too. Um, we're, we can talk about Constructed as well as title too or any other uh, real formats or any other future format. Yeah, that, I think he's in staying in title. I agree with that. Yeah, he's going to be very important. Kind of like the Waka backup that we're all in, that we have too. So like with both of these, you're giving a 10 forward 2K, you know. And yep. Yeah, it seems cool. He can block and then buff himself, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's cool. He's four. He's a 4-9 effectively by himself. That's cool. Um, uh, oh, by the way, uh, I didn't ask you guys what your rating scale is. Like, are we doing Moogles or Cactuars? Like, is this going to be three Moogles or three Cactuars? <laughs> oh, I, I, well, since it's 10, I'm going to give it uh, two Blitz Balls out of five. Okay, we're doing Blitz Balls this, uh, this, this fire <laughs> review, guys. So we're one out of five. Uh, Chris says two Blitz Balls. Uh, Adam? Yeah, I'll say two. Let's go with two Blitz Balls. Uh, let's move on then. Next we have, how do you guys say this? Read it to me. Aegis, I think. Aegis? Well, he says Aegis, I say Aegis. It's funny, we both say it differently. I, I've heard it. I've heard it both ways too from local from the other players at my locals too. Uh, so Aegis, uh, the the forward, the job warrior of life forwards. Other than Aegis, you control gain brave. See, we see we're seeing that fires doing that a lot now, giving other things brave. Uh, when Aegis enters the field, you may play a forward of cost two from your hand. Uh, Adam. Um, so I know me and Chris have talked about this card a lot. I think this card's insane. Um, I think it's, it's incredibly strong, and it's mostly because of the second line of text. Mm -hmm. um, it's not color dependent, so you can play any two drop you want of any color. Um, I mean, granted, he's obviously better with the Warriors of Light because he gets the first line of text and becomes relevant, and there's a card in the set that we'll talk about coming up um, that plays really well with him. But I've been playing Mono Fire since this, like, even before the set released, but like, as cards released, and this card is tested pretty insane for me just dropping a two drop like it's a really good strong turn one play um and if you're dropping another warrior light with them it's even stronger so I, i'm really high on this card so it's kind of like uh i don't a yang or sort of thing right like uh yeah it was drop a four drop drop a two drop and then if it's a warrior of light it has brave right 
So, yeah, except, uh, you know, Yang Ursula is kind of tied to, it has to be Yang into Ursula, and yeah. this is like Aegis, whatever you want, you know? Yeah, but it, it still makes it a good first turn play, is what I'm, I guess yep. what I'm saying, so. Yep. That's cool. Um, and then, I think the, I, I think you guys would agree with me too, that the fact that it's, uh, the job it's referring to, the job is Warrior of Light, we find it more stronger than the Guardians, right? Giving us, giving those oh, yeah. brave. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. 100%, right? Uh, Chris, so what are your thoughts? Oh man, this card is insane. I think um, because I've been playing, you know, since before Opus Seven came out, I've been playing Earthfire Warriors of Light. This guy is just absolutely bonkers. Um, being able to go into him into uh, the two drop we're going to talk about, and then the fact that that guy can just go, and then it makes Wall so much better because you don't have to waste Brave on anything but him if you want to have it. And then when you have like the Light Warrior of Light out, oh man, like. This this guy this guy's bananas is absolutely bananas. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to agree with you guys. This he's I, again going to what we were saying. The Warrior of Light thing makes him a lot more versatile. Well, less it is uh, stuck to the Warrior of Light deck almost, but um, mm -hmm. you can add other two drops that aren't necessarily Warrior of Lights to make him, you know, multi uses like give him multiple uses I guess for the deck. So. Yep, he's great in Fire Ice too because you can play Sid Reigns or the new uh, Laswell for free as well. There we go. See. Oh, that's good. Uh, what are we gonna give it? Four, five. I, I'm I'm pretty high, so I'll probably give it in the sky five. Five blitz balls. Oh yeah, five blitz balls out of five. Five, five out of five. Okay, all right. We'll move on then. Next is red mage. Uh, two cost red mage standard unit. Uh, when red mage enters the field, if the cost paid to play red mage included ICP, your opponent discards one card from his hand. Uh, you can tap to choose a forward and deal it one thousand. Uh, I'll take this one. So I think effectively uh, fire ice decks now have another Thaumaturge, right? Is that what we were seeing here? Uh, I feel like this is going to be... Uh, I don't know if it's going to... So I was dabbling in the idea of a fire ice um, ag, uh, hand disruption deck as well. Um, and I felt like it tested well against the mono because fire has certain cards that help against that. And I think this deck is going to help push that forward more. So I like this card. I think it's pretty good. Um, Chris, what do you think? Um, I agree with you in the sense that it, it is clearly locked into Fire Ice. The the only thing I don't like about it is to really get that effect is you do have to pay backups for it. Um, I don't think it's a bad card. I don't I don't know if it has a home though, but I think if you if you are going for that Fire Ice disruption, I think you can definitely find a place for it. Uh, and also, it does play well, again, if you're going Fire Ice, the Conjurer backup that gets back standard units. Yeah, yeah. It's one you can recycle with that to keep the hand, the, the, car, the the discard. So there is something there, I think. I'm just not sure in what capacity. Okay. Adam? Yeah, I uh, kind of side with Chris on that, too. Uh, I think he's a bit slower than Thaumaturge because you, you want to pay, like, one Fire, one Ice out of backup. So Thaumaturge, you can just kind of pitch up Ice card to play it. Um, but... I mean, the ping might come into a play at some point. It's kind of decent. Uh, you can choose your own forward, so it plays well with God Luma, I guess, if you want to do some three-color jankiness. Um, I don't, I'm don't. i not super high on it, but I, I mean, I think if you could consistently get it to the point where you're discarding a card with this card, it's pretty decent. That's true. Uh, so I guess if we, if we think about it too uh, objectively, um, so I mentioned that Fire Ice has good ways to beat, like the Mono Ice decks. Um, even if they are playing the Thaumaturge, that one CP, that one, that one K damage, I, I mean will kill the Thaumaturges once you have enough cards. Assuming you can get enough hand, like, right? Yep. So he'll beat them. So he's he's almost better. No, I'm not saying he's almost better, but there's there's pros and cons to having both, and I guess uh, um, the trade-off will be the way you decide to play the deck. Uh, I agree. I okay. Agree. Um, uh, let's go with two or three. I, I I'm, I'm, I'd probably say two, two? for me. Yeah. It, I, I'll give I'll give it a two with an asterisk because I, I I think I want to test it more. Um, I, I'll give it a two. I'll give it a two. Okay. Two blitz balls out of five. Two out of five. All right. Uh, Frit. <laughs> These cards are funny. Uh, I, I, this is probably my least favorite one because of the way he looks. But uh, Frit <laughs> is also a monster. In all, <laughs> is in all situations. Uh, when Frit is put from the field into the break zone, you may search for one card named Ifrit and add it to your hand. Uh, Adam. Uh, yeah, so this was our spoiler. Um, oh, that's we, right. Uh, I remember. I remember now. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I like it a lot. I think the only problem is the, the efforts themselves aren't super strong as compared to, like, you know, say, Shiva or Ramu. Mm -hmm. um, it's not that they're bad. They're just not as, like, as good. 
Um, he he's essentially free though when he dies, right? So when he dies, he's gonna go get you a card. He only costs you two CP. Yeah. Um, it's really gonna depend on how good the Ifrits are, and I don't think they're that great right now. So I don't think he's gonna see a lot of play, but he's definitely a card to look for as, as they print more Ifrits. Okay, Chris. Uh, I agree. Um, I think he's an excellent card. I think this entire cycle of these uh, forward monster searchers are all really solid. But this one is definitely the weaker of the three because he's tied to probably the most average set of uh, summons. But I do like that when he dies, he replaces himself. He's searchable by things that search monsters. Then on the flip side, he gets destroyed by things that destroy monsters. But I guess you don't care about that as much because he does replace himself when he dies. Uh, I agree with that. I don't think he sees a lot of play yet. But I do think you know, he plays well with Godot since he's a two-drop. Uh, he plays well with Aegis that we just talked about because mm -hmm. he's also a two-drop. So there is some stuff there. It's just a matter of, again, in what capacity he sees play. Uh, so so uh, you mentioned that, like, uh, the monster situation. How do you guys feel about them also being monsters? Like, uh, It's kind of a double-edged sword, right? Like, they're searchable now, or they can bring them back with monster recursion, but they're also open to the removal for both as well. Yeah. So it's 50-50, right? It's like... Exactly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I think it's fine for these ones because you don't really care if they die that much. You want them to die, obviously. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. They're chump blockers, as far as I'm like. That's how I use them at the, you know, for the pre-release anyway. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go with two blitz balls. I think. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I think two. Until we see two better. Some. Until we see better ifrits, of course. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or or a forward yeah. ifrit. Uh, then it's gonna be important. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on. And here it is, Ifrit himself, the new Ifrit. EX Burst, choose a forward, deal it 7,000 damage. If Ifrit results from EX Burst, deal it 8,000 damage instead. Uh, so originally, uh, I'm, like we were just talking about the Ifrits. I agree that all the Ifrits are a little underwhelming. Um, and then they all have a little of a downside. Like I think this is the second one that has uh, an exception to why it deals 8,000 damage. Like the other one, you have to discard another card or something. Or like the first one, right? So there's three. There's, there's three. the discard for ten. Then there's the type zero that you have to control the type zero, and then there's yeah. this one. Oh, there you go. So they're all they're all the same. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but um, searching, I guess this one would be. How do you guys feel about this one, Chris? Uh, I actually really like this one. Uh, the big reason is the fact that it does eight off of a burst. Um, Fire has not had a natural eight k off of a burst outside of the Opus Six Bahamut. And I think that alone warrants the, the consideration on this card. Um, the fact, it, it does do seven when you play it normally, which is, you know, and it costs four, which is slightly worse than Bryn Hilder. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you're really banking for this thing to come off the burst. And if you have K-Tuna out, um, then you're definitely getting 8K and then 9K on burst. Um, yeah. I do think it, it becomes a fire summon that sees a lot of play because I, I think of all the efforts, it may be one of the better ones. So I like it. Okay. Adam, same? Uh, so not quite the same. Okay. I, I, I think I agree with them that like it's relevant. It, people hated on this card more than it deserved, I think. Like it's not as bad. It's not trash, but um, it's still underwhelming for me. Like, uh, I'd probably still rather run, like, Brynn Hill. Like, I'm going to run three Brynn Hilders before I run one of this card, probably. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, if you want more bursts, like Chris said, like, you're going to put this in your deck. And maybe a mono fire decks is probably going to make the cut as, like, a 1 or a 2 of just for some extra bursts. Is it going to replace Especially. Is it going to replace Bahamut, you think? The... Uh, it, mi it might. Depends on how relevant bursts are. Like, against Turbo, I'd rather have this than Bahamut, of obviously. Course, yeah. And removing from game isn't that super relevant right now unless you're fighting like Renella. That's really a big one, I guess, mm -hmm. that you see a lot. Okay. All right. Well, what do we give it then? I'm probably leaning toward a two. I'm actually leaning towards a three. I, I, yeah, I'm going to go with Chris on this one, three. So yeah. there you go. It's a two, three from, from us, guys. Uh, let's mm -hmm. move on. Uh, Varuna, I really like this card. When a forward you control deals damage to your opponent, Varuna also becomes a forward with 8,000 power and brave. This effect does not end at the end of the turn. This ability will not trigger Varuna if is uh, if Varuna is a forward already. Um, so I, I really like these effects. So in this set, we've got two new like effects for monsters, which I found were interesting. Um, I think Varuna is, is very strong. He's a two, effectively a two-drop AK, and at some point you're gonna be you're gonna deal damage to your opponent. So this is just um, I like him a lot. Uh, I think he's 
gonna be good i think he's gonna help aggro decks as well like if you open you know Tifa, first turn tifa haste um you can pitch one for him and one for tifa attack him and then just get rune out um what do you think adam uh yeah i like this card a lot too um i think it's really important that fire can get like something that like gives them brave and allows them to pressure and play defense and it's pretty cheap uh obviously like you could play this guy and then next turn play aster dealing damage and now you, this guy kind of has haste because he's already been sitting there for a turn yeah and then you get to attack with that guy too um he's big uh the only thing is like because he's 2cp he's gonna get hit by a lot of different kinds of removal and he's also a monster and a forward but like i think the the only drawback is like i don't know where you're gonna find room for him in your decks like if you can though i think he's a fine card I think, uh, but is he worth the card slot? I think is going to be the question. I think he's going, like I was saying, I think he's going to cater to the more aggro style deck um, because it, this. I think this now lets fire swarm a little bit better than it used to before. Um, Chris, what do you think? Uh, I agree. Um, I think the card is excellent, and while you know the downside is there that he does get hit by all the monster removal because he is in that monster sweet spot of two CP or less. I think getting an eight K with Brave is just just super, super great value. And the fact that he's great at all stages of the game, like you said, you can aggro him out early with like a Tifa. He's great in the like mid game when, you know, you're kind of, you know, trading blows with your opponent. And he's also great at the end game was one of the biggest things he combos with is the new jet, which we'll talk about because jet comes in, deals a point of damage. Boom. Now you've just got a nine K and, and an eight K brave online yep. for doing nothing. Yep. 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 So there's, a, I think the card is really good, but I do agree with Adam. It's a, it, he, he's going to go in the right deck, and I do think he goes in a more swarmy aggro deck for sure. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give this guy four. What do you guys think? Four blitz balls. Yeah, I, I can side with that. I like him a lot. Yeah, four blitz balls is solid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's move on then. Uh, black Mage, uh, backup, standard unit, uh, fire and tap, put Black Mage into the break zone, choose a forward, deal at 4,000. This is just like the, the Ice Black one, but you don't. it doesn't have to be dull. Um, as far as ping damage goes, I like it. Uh, 4K is pretty good for backups, um, other than, right? That's a standard for most backups, right? Yeah, so we have this backup already. Um, it's a, it's basically a reprint with a different category. Uh, which, for the same element, though? Yep. Yeah, right? Opus yep. 1 Black Mage does the exact same thing. Yeah, yep. they're, they're doing that a lot. How do you, uh, well, that's a good question. How do you guys feel about these? Uh, do you think it's for new players, or do you think it's so you can run multiples of it? It's hard to say exactly what it's for because I don't see myself ever wanting to run more than three of these cards, really. Okay. And maybe the only exception is the wind one, but I knew then I'm not sure. Um, so I mean, the... maybe people, some people are thinking maybe it's a rotation, but I, I'm gonna hold my. Oh, that makes sense too. So, um, well, the reason I say it's probably for new players is because we did just get those starter decks as well. So, uh, yep. the, the idea was to get those those starter decks in, get newer players and at, at a more advanced pace and. These cards effectively are the same as what Opus One or Two, probably, right? It, it so, varies. It depends on the element. It varies on the element. So it's like if you're not going to go back and get any of those old sets, you still have access to these abilities in this set. Um, right, but, and it is also a new category. Uh, you know, they are pushing title category five up to this point had like little to no backups. Okay. And now they have a ton. Ah, I see. So there you go. See, title is important too. <laughs> Uh, this is going to be a standard card then, like a two, right? Because we wouldn't play this. We, we didn't play the other yeah. one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. About the same. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Zaz. Four cost backup. Ravager. When Zaz enters the field, you may search for one fire summon at it to your hand. Uh, I don't know. I just, I'm just i biased, I guess, but I don't like Zaz cards. <laughs> 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 um, but someone, one of you guys, uh, Adam, try to convince me what... Or um, tell me what you think, so, I guess. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not going to, like, say this card's amazing, but it, it is a tutor for Phoenix, which is a pretty powerful summon um, that you can't, like, search for right now. Like, K-Tuna can't go get you a 7-CP Phoenix. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's its best use. Uh, it's nice that it has a burst. Uh, it's pretty average to me, but, like, if your deck revolves around the Phoenixes, this might be a card you want to play, and maybe, like, as a one or two of, maybe. Okay. That's fair. I like that. That's a good point. Chris? I agree with that 100%. I mean, the fact that it has a burst makes me consider it. I wouldn't see it more than a one of. Um, I 100% love it in title because you can search your Bryn Hilders, You can search the 9CP Bahamut. Um, and the fact that it plays well with being you know, 13 cards, which 
having a certain amount of 13 cards is important for some car 13 cards, which I think it's a great title card and a good one of in the right deck if you are playing it. So it's, it's fine. It's an average card. Okay, so three? Three out of five? Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I'm fine giving it a three, honestly, because of the burst. If it didn't have burst, I think it would be a, a rip in half. <laughs> rip in half, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now we have Samurai. Uh, two cards back up. When Samurai enters the field, choose a fire forward. It gains 2,000 power and brave until the end of the turn. You can tap, put Samurai into the break zone, choose a fire forward. It gains 2,000 power and brave until the end of the turn. You can only use this ability if you have received 5 uh, points of damage or more. Um, uh, Chris, take away. Take it away on this one. Oh, I, I absolutely love this card too, right? Um, it's good at, again, this is another fire card that's good in many stages of the game. Uh, you can play it early because it is a 2 CP backup. You can play it mid-game when, again, when you're trading blows. And I do like, you know, one of the things that we've talked about is one of the fire's biggest problems is that they kind of run out of gas or they don't have any way to really just keep, you know, keep the shields up coming down the home stretch. This card allows you to do that. Giving a guy plus 2K and Brave, you know, just for, and it's just, a, I mean, yeah, you have to have five points of damage, but that's kind of what happens with fire. They do damage quick and they just can't seal the deal. So play that, you know, break that onto something late game when you've got five points of damage and you're able to, you're, you're able to keep the momentum going. The only downside is it is restricted to fire. But I like it. So a uh, question for you. Is this going to, like I know you said restricted to fire, um, but is this going to replace uh, other important fire backups, you think? Or is this going to just move its way into the rotation for... I, I think it moves its way into the rotation depending on you know how, um, how people are testing it. I know it's been testing very well for me when I've been playing it. Um, now it's no more than like a one or a two of, okay. in my opinion, but like, it's one of those cards that it, whenever you play it, it, it has an impact or whenever you use it, it's a good card. Uh, is it better or worse than selfie? Uh, I think it's better. Um, now it, it depends. Like if you're playing mono fire, I think selfie's fine. Um, but the thing about Mono Fire is it's really hard for them to maintain card advantage and have these CP dumps, um, especially with some of the other cards we're going to see soon. I, I just don't think Selfie is going to be good enough anymore. You can also use this defensively. Selfie can only be used aggressively. Aggressively, yeah. That, that's part of it. Okay. Uh, Adam, so what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, kind of echo, Chris. It's good every like every stage of the game. Um I mean, you you probably don't want to play it the very first turn, but like every turn after that, it's gonna get pretty amazing value. Um, and then yeah, it's gonna break itself late game for it to do the same thing, which is already pretty strong. My only thing is like it kind of sucks that you can only target fire forwards with it, but I guess if you want to push one on fire, you need cards like that to force people to play it. Um, so I, I like it a lot. Okay, uh, so let's give it a three. I think we can all agree on. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, three blitz balls. Uh, and our first big boy, Jet. Uh, Guardian, if you have received four points of damage or more, the cost of playing Jet onto the field is reduced by four, making him a one drop. Uh, when Jet enters the field, if you have at least two points of damage more than your opponent, Jet deals your opponent one point of damage. Uh, Adam. Uh, yeah, so I've been playing this card a lot. I, I'm pretty sure. I know Chris has as well. I think everyone has. Um, <laughs> a lot of people have. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really good. Um, obviously, you never want to pay five for him. Right? Obviously. Um, but when you pay one for him, it feels really, really good. And, like, I mean, maybe he's not a three of, but um, I think I've been running, like, two of them in my deck, and he's he's performed extremely well. I mean, if you can play him, deal a point of damage to your opponent, give him haste, you know, you don't want to block this guy either because he's big. You got Liberality, he's like a 10k. Um, he lets you come back from situations that Fire had some trouble coming back from, and he gives you a body on the board at the same time. Mm -hmm. So so I like him a lot. Uh, Chris? Oh, dude, absolutely. I've been playing this guy ever since he's been spoiled. Uh, so like, <laughs> he, he's such a good card. The, the fact that we've got a 1 CP 9k, you know me, I'm a sucker for value, and this guy is all value. And Again, like Adam said to Mira when he said, you're never going to pay five for this guy. Like, if you're to a point where you don't need him, you're pitching him for CP every time. So he's great to see, he's great CP early, and he's a, he's the best one drop you can you can play for fire in the game. And he's, I, I just think he does give fire that comeback factor that they didn't have. Like, he's very much like Samurai where, you know, he gives you some late game gas that you 
Okay. And like we were talking about too, the Varuna thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, he's got a lot of he's got a lot of uh, potential, I think, too. Um, I agree. Uh, the fact that he's guardian, though, uh, the job is is whatever, right, for us and uh, the Final Fantasy X thing. Do you think he's best? Uh, do you think he's gonna go in every like fire variant now, or is he just gonna be strictly? Mono? Probably not ever every fire variant, but anything that's Most trying of to yeah, I think a lot of them he'll be in, and anything that's like tempo-y and trying to take something remotely into the late game he's going to be really good and any type of deck that's running Facilia also it's just going to ramp him there faster okay all right uh so is this a five though is this five blitz balls here i'm, I'm five on this guy yeah I, like I, I i think he's five as well i really do all right five blitz balls it is jet let's see what you got coming up in the season uh three cost summoner when summoner enters the field choose a forward your uh choose a forward Opponent controls if the cost paid to play summoner included lightning CP dole it. Uh... <laughs> just just, yep. just play them on. Just play them on. Just play them on, right? right? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or even the new Thangrad. <laughs> um, yeah, that too. Yeah. So this is okay. It's on curve, I guess. Uh, it's obviously stuck. So I don't know. I guess I'm I'm indifferent with all these that require certain CPs because um, unless you're playing that combination in deck, it's kind of like whatever, right? We can agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I yeah. agree. It's very vanilla. Very vanilla, almost. Yeah. So let's just. Uh, I probably we'll stay two, right, for these, just to be fair and. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not it's completely not awful. Yeah, <laughs> I think he just gets overshadowed by other cards that already exist. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's move on then. Uh, and the one we were talking about earlier, two cost soul warrior of light. If you control a job warrior of light forward, other than soul, soul gains plus two thousand power. And haste making him a seven uh, seven k. Uh, I think uh, so. Going back to what Aegis uh, and the whole, I guess the whole theme of Warrior Light, he fits in well. Uh, I think you mentioned you were playing Fire Earth Warrior Lights right for a while, Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, how does yeah, this yep. guy? How does this guy fit into that? And what are your takes on this card? Oh, this, this guy is nuts. This, this guy is another guy that's just really, really solid, right? Because um, you know, I'll tell you what. Uh, early turn, Aegis in the soul swing with with uh you know plus 2k brave and haste then on the next turn follow that up with the light warrior of light man your opponent's in trouble and the fact that this guy just needs another warrior of light to get the 2k and brave like he's or sorry the 2k and haste he's really good if you're playing and he, he clearly belongs in a warrior of light deck or just a really fast mono fire deck because you can just get the value right off the of aegis right off the bat um He's one of those cards that when you look at it, you're like, oh, that seems pretty average. Oh, man. When you when you play him and you drop the Age of Soul, and your opponent's immediately on the back foot, and he just gets better when you have more Warriors of Light out. Mm -hmm. Amazing card. Uh, Adam? Yeah, I like him a lot, too. He's obviously, like, Aegis' best friend. Uh, it's <laughs> the optimal play off him. I think if you're playing Aegis, even if you're not running, like, a straight-up Warrior Light deck, you probably want at least, like, two of this guy. Um... Just because it's that good. Like, turn that can just win you a game, turn one. Like, they better hope to hit a burst, so they have to have an immediate answer. And like Chris said, if you drop Light Warrior Light or something like that behind it, they better have, like, a Shantoto, and they're probably going to have to pay a lot for it, like, from hand. Yeah. So, um, and that could be a good board against Turbo, too. Like, that could be a, a board that Turbo has trouble dealing with. Yeah, I can see that, too. All right. Spoiler alert, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, like what I was saying, I guess, earlier, too, I feel like Fire has a lot of cards that help deal with all types of ice decks. So um, mm -hmm. just, I guess, giving this option to a Warrior of Light job-based deck is, is going to be helpful in, to deal with all matchups, I guess. It is. Um, Absolutely. Uh, do you think this is a better combo than Yang or Solo with Aegis and Soul? Um, well, I think the only reason it's better is because a Aegis is more dynamic than Yang is, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So you have um, a, and their jobs are more relevant. Like warrior lights are more relevant than monks. Than monks, okay. But you you trade two nine Ks, one with brave for an eight and a seven with haste, and uh, brave because Aegis gives them brave. Oh, that's right, Aegis gives them brave. Oh, okay, that's true. I almost forgot about that. Yeah, uh, but you yeah. also you you have more consistency in my opinion because you don't have to drop soul off of it. You could drop any two drop. Mm -hmm. Chris, you were gonna say something. Yeah, I was just gonna say too. Like, if you're looking at it in the context of the whole deck, like if you if you look at it, like if I'm gonna if I'm gonna drop just Yang and Ursula by themselves, they're a little bit more fragile, um, because Ursula without Yang is just very average. 
Soul is fine without Aegis because you have so many other warriors of light to buff. Mm -hmm. um, whereas, you know, Ursula is dependent on one particular guy. A Aegis has, he has... Everyone. Like if how you, many if, warrior of lights are, yeah, are there now? He has so many cards that just make him extremely good. Whereas you can just pop Yang with something and he's, he's just... Ursula immediately becomes worse. Yeah, and if you're playing Arc, Lunith, or Ingus, or any of them, it's like he's an AK with haste and... You yeah. know, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, yeah, he's never going to lose that almost effectively is what you're saying. Pretty much. Pretty okay, much. yeah, I can, I can see the, the argument there. I like it too. Uh, he's really good. Uh, four or five, though, how do you feel? I think I th I'm giving him a four only because I think he's... I think Aegis overshadows him. Like, I think Aegis makes him better. So like if he... Aegis is a five, I think I'd probably rate this guy a four. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with giving him a four also because he is a two drop. So, like, it doesn't matter how big he is, Shadow Lord's going to pop him the minute he comes in. Okay, all right. Uh, I think... Oh, and this was uh, <laughs> the Turks. Uh, <laughs> uh, the spoiler they had. Uh, Berserker. When Berserker deals damage to your opponent or to a forward, break Berserker. Uh, so we've given our opinions on that. And if you guys haven't heard that podcast, uh, go check it out. But uh, I want to get your guys' opinions on this card. Uh, Adam. So it, it's it's not complete trash, but it's not good either. Um, it's, it's a nice, tricky play with, like, baby phoenix as a blocker um it's really just a blocker like you're not going to attack with this guy because if you attack with this guy in order to save him you're gonna have to waste more cards that you don't want to waste on this card but if he trades up it's not terrible yeah um problem is i don't think i want to waste card slots on him in my deck either right <laughs> so uh so he's yeah. yeah so uh chris uh, I feel exactly the same way. I think he, I, I think if he was gonna go in any deck, you'd probably put him in that shock trooper deck. But I agree. Like I think there's better card slots. Um, I think his best play is just as a piece of removal, where you put him on the board, you sit there and block with him until you decide what you want to kill with it. Um, that's really about it. Yeah. So, uh, are we giving this card a one though? <laughs> is this like gonna be our first yeah, one? Yeah, I think it's probably a one. Uh, you know, I'll give it a one if, if, if we're doing half rate because I don't think it's terrible. I think it's extremely niche. So, I, I'd feel fine giving it a two. But if y'all want to give it a one, we'll go majority majority rules. Majority here. rules, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on then. Uh, uh, man, Bao Bao Guavan, how do you say that? I say Bagavin, but I don't know if that's right either. I don't know. Or Bagalvin. Bagalvin sounds yeah, good. I, I was trying to Begalvin. I was trying to be Spanish, like put make the G like a guavan, like guayaba. <laughs> but uh, it might I, be. <laughs> uh, so when Bagavin enters the field, choose a forward your opponent controls. If the cost to play Bagavin was only paid with fire CP, deal it seven K. Uh, S fire tap, choose a forward any uh, element except fire, deal it ten thousand. Right? Yeah. Yep. All right, that's cool. Um. I don't think it's as good as Emperor <laughs> Zand. Um, I think it's uh, I think it's okay though. I don't know how much play it's gonna see. Uh, Chris, what do you think? Uh, I, I think it's actually a pretty okay card. Um, the fact that it, you know if you're paying five CP for something and it does it has immediate value when it comes into play. Uh, the S is just icing. I don't think you'll ever use that. You'll probably run this in Mono Fire as a one, maybe a two of. Um, because the other things too, um, this also plays well with another card that we'll talk about here. Um, but the fact that it has immediate value, and then you can do something else with it, uh, like you can uh, use things that'll buff the damage that afford. There, there's a lot of cards Fire has that buffs the damage that they do. Um, I think he's fine. I, I think he's absolutely a fine card. Or I don't know if that's a he or she. I can't tell. <laughs> um, but I think I think the card I think the card is really really good and it's clearly going to see play in mono fire but that's about all right um, with that argument though I wanted to see in the in the league of five drops for fire right we have embers and uh, tomato Zuyu, and now this uh, where does it stand mm -hmm. like on your choices for like to put it in there is it first second third well, or fourth. Well, they're all in last place behind the greatest five drop that Fire has, and that's uh, King Edgar of Gar. <laughs> or even Jet now. Like, we have Jet. Even though Jet's effectively, like, we wait for Jet to be a one cost. But in that list, though, mm -hmm. even, okay, if we, even if we add Edgar, <laughs> uh, where, where do you put Balgavin then? Like, when you're deck building, how, how high on that list is he for you? 
if I'm building mono fire, he's probably right there. Like honestly, if I'm building, well, I, I'm gonna take the Final Fantasy VI bias out of the equation because when I build mono fire, I start with three Saint and three Edgar, and I go from there. But um, if I'm building like if I'm being a smart player and building a proper mono fire deck, I actually put him right up there with Zond and Jet. Okay. Uh, Adam, what about you? Yeah, I think I don't think he's as good as Zande on paper, but he does get immediate value, and Zande doesn't really do that. Like, Zande is weak, so it, it really depends on the meta, right? I think Zande is weak to water because like they can bounce him, and then it doesn't. They don't really care. You have to pay for him again. At least this guy's gonna kill something if you bounce him. But if the, the also if the meta is a bunch of mono decks, like seven K is not gonna hit a lot of relevant things for paying five. Mm-hmm. But you do get a body. Which is nice, and like Chris said, like he probably won't ask most games. Uh, but I, I do think he's a pretty decent card. But I think Zombie is a better card. Like I'd say Zombie is number one. He's probably number two, and I don't really count Jack as a five drop. Okay, so that's fair. By that, he really means Zombie is number two because Edgar's number one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on then. Um, Fang, uh, Commando. If you control two or more category thirteen characters, Fang is first strike. If you control four more category 13 forwards uh characters sorry i'm saying uh fang gains haste and then if you control six or more fang gains plus three thousand power um i use this for the pre-release as well just for the first strike first strike is going to be the easiest uh six might be a, a a long game the deck has to definitely feel like the deck has to be centered around the 13 characters um i mm-hmm. do think it's on curve so i like it for that um what do you say chris I actually like this card a lot, and uh, the fact that, you know, when it comes into play, I think this card's good in Mono Fire. I'll, 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 I'll gather my thoughts here. I think the card's great in Mono Fire because if you have her and LeBrow out, all of a sudden you've got an 8K first strike because she counts herself towards the characters. Um, in Fire Ice, I think she's great because you'll have her, uh, new backup Snow. Uh, you'll probably have a Sarah in there somewhere. Um, you might have the new Saz in there, which counts. And then, obviously, in title, this thing is just an ungodly ass-beater in 13 title. Because she will have all of the all of her keywords and her buff when she comes in the play. Uh, I'd like it if she had uh, Brave instead of Haste, though, oh, right? Man, like, if she had Brave, she might be busted. Yeah, right? <laughs> I think so, too. Um, I like her in the Fire Eyes concept, too. Um, Adam, what do you think? Yeah, kind of like what Chris said, basically. Like, those are basically all the ideas that we've had. Uh, LeBrow, obviously, is the easiest thing, just a modifier. You're gonna, she's going to be an 8K first strike when she comes in. Um, and then, yeah, in title, she's really good. Title, she's beyond good. I think I think 13 got a lot of really good cards for title in this set, right? Oh, yeah, they focus <laughs> on 13 title a fair amount, I think. Yeah. yeah, 13, 10, and 5 got legit title cards in this set. 10 didn't need any more cards. <laughs> Oh, right. Man. All right. Uh, so I'm going to go with, uh, I think I'm going to give it a three, though, because it requires a lot of stuff to go with it, right? So that's yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's perfectly fair. Okay. Sure. All right. Let's move on. And bomb. So we got these monsters uh, early on in the spoilers, but put bomb into the break zone, choose a forward, deal 3,000 damage, and then deal 2,000 damage to all forwards your opponent controls. Now, I, I, I don't know if I was clear on this or if I read wrong or someone told me otherwise. Does it deal 5,000 to the first forward? It So it's two instances uh, of damage, but technically, yes. So what if it's Minwoo, then it counts as two instances. Oh, so they're separate, right? So it's like, yes. it'll take three first, and then if Minwoo's out, it doesn't take anything, right? Correct. Okay, Very see, much. that's good to know. Okay, I wasn't sure myself. I know it's read that way, and I was confident, but someone asked me, and I rolled it the right way. I'm glad. <laughs> and then you can discard Bomb, choose a forward, deal it 2,000 damage. You can only use this ability if Bomb is in your hand. Uh, so this, this this is the other new mechanic I guess we see from monsters. M- monsters are becoming a little more tricky in that regard. But mm-hmm. how do you guys feel about this card, Adam? Uh, I, I think it's decent. I don't think it's like amazing. It's really good against Vikings, right? Like yeah, kind of wipes their board uh, as long as it's out on the board. And then you could just pitch it to kill a Viking if you have to. Um, maybe it lets you trade up. Like now you have to think about situations where your opponent only has one card in hand where normally they, they were tapped out and couldn't cast a summon, and they can discard this monster to trade up by 2k. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, but again, I think with Varuna, like I said with Varuna, like you got to make room for the card. 
and I think that's where it's going to be hard because I mean we're we're to the point now where you got seven sets and you got to make a fifty card deck, so making room for it's going to be the hard part. I think. I agree, uh, Chris. Uh, yeah, he he hit the nail right on the head. I think the card's actually really really good. Um, obviously, if your opponent's playing Minwoo, you just you just don't even think about it. Yeah, but. Um, again, it's one of those cards that you're really going to have to find a spot for it. And I think if you build, I think if you build a deck around it or like around those kind of those bombs and those smaller monsters and those things, you could do something really special with. But otherwise, I think it's really hard to find room for it. Okay, I agree. Let's give it a two and move on, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Meath. Uh, when Meath enters uh, the field, you may discard a card. If you do, search for one fire, uh, one forward of the same cost as this card card and add it to your hand. Uh, I think this card has a lot of potential, um, but what do you guys think? Uh, I think this card's pretty insane. I think it's really, really good. Um, this is similar to a tutor in the other card game we used to play called Versus System. Yeah. Um, but the cool thing in this game is, so it's not, it's not color... Like, you don't need to pitch a fire card to get a fire card. You can pitch a fire card, go get a earth card. But you can also pitch light and dark cards to this. Yeah, so, that was that, that was going to be a good point, yeah. Yeah, you can unlock your hand, like, um, get rid of your one of your light forwards that you already have on board, maybe. Go get a fire forward or something like that. Uh, and it doesn't have to be a forward either. Like, you could pitch, say you're running Facilias and you want to run three Facilia. Now you can pitch your Facilias to go to get a 3CP forward. And I think that's really good. Yep, yeah, that's good. That's really good. Uh, Chris? Yep, I agree with all of that. And that's This is one of my favorite cards in this set, and um, this is one I've been playing with a lot um, because he does allow you to toolbox your drops, and that's something that I've always been a big fan of. And that's why when I was talking about Begalvin earlier, why I think he also belongs in Fire Dex. If you're at a point where you don't need him or you have a Zonde out already, play this, pitch the Zonde, go get Begalvin, like, the fact that this guy allows you to, he allows you to use your one drops, your, your one ofs very, very efficiently. And he does unmuck your hand. Like say you draw, you, know, you, you draw those two Nidhogs. Well, shit, I can't do anything with that. But now you could pitch one and grab Sin. Ooh, you know, you could just get real wacky with it. I think he's going to, uh, what I like about him too is uh, when you guys were talking, the more we talk about it, more the more things pop into my head. It also helps set up for S abilities too, right? So yep. it's yep. like you're looking for the for the Vivi, I guess, or um, I don't know, even the Saban, you can help. Yep. Or Edgar. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah. See, now you're talking. But really, talking. any any card that with an S ability, and, and if you're playing this in any multicolor deck, dual color, or anything like that, it's gonna help mm -hmm. fix that. So that's cool. Um, yeah, he's gonna be good. Uh, maybe four. Just yeah, no, absolutely. Right. Absolutely a four, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and Lan, the other legendary Mirage Keeper. If you control a card named Rain. Land gains a thousand power. One land deals damage to your opponent or to a forward. Choose a forward. You may pay four, uh, three fire, one colorless. If you do so, deal it damage equal to land's power. Uh, this guy is super annoying to deal with. Um, mm -hmm. I I think he's a really great card. I like his. Uh, I think I think he's great because he's on curve. He's definitely not a threat to deal with. Uh, I don't know if you guys. He reminds me a little bit of the six drop Shantoto, um, mm -hmm. but it's a little more controlled, and I think that's what's important about him. Um, especially because normally he'll be at 9k and I think if we kind of partner him up with the uh, sync and the illusionist he's gonna be a lot more threatening because we get to control his output a little bit more yep uh, Chris what do you think this is a car that I, I've lost many hours of sleep over because I do like the car and I really and I want to like it more than I do um don't I, I have some problems with the card um now i agree with you 100 percent. like if he gets going he can take over a game he is an immediate threat and has to die as soon as he gets the board the only the problem i have is he's really only good once you're set up and because the three fire and a colorless that's a lot to dump into him especially for a color that doesn't really generate a lot of card advantage so chances are you're using most of your resources to dump into him and then you know, if say you do that and he just dies, you know, you, you're let you're left with that, and that and I think that's the problem I have with him. And the three fire makes it very difficult to splash him in the decks that he wants to be in, like fire earth, fire ice. I, I think these are decks that he has a home in, but because that that that, three, that that one extra fire makes such a world of difference. 
Um, but that this is a card that while I, I, I have a little bit more negativity than positive, I have never wanted to be more wrong about a card in my entire life. I, I want this dude to just a monster, and I think he can be. I just don't know yet. Okay. I think we'll, we'll, we'll see. He's one. He's definitely a card we need to keep an eye on going forward into the next oh, 100%. Season. Uh, Adam? Yeah, I think I think the three fire makes him basically a mono fire card. It's really hard to splash him because now, like, you either have to pitch two fire cards to it or you have to have three fire backups down and overpay. But um, the more I think about him, though, the more I do like him. Um, I'm still kind of on the fence, too, like where Chris is. Like, I, I know he has a lot of potential, and he's going to make for a lot of awkward situations for your opponent. But um, the more I think about it, too, like, say you swing, you deal damage. If you're able – if you have, like, 8 CP, I mean, granted, this might be, like, a dream. I mean, because his damage dealing ability also triggers his ability again. So you could pay 4 and then pay 4 again, and you're <laughs> just, like, start the sheet gunning the board. Yeah. But again, like Chris said, fire doesn't really generate a lot of card advantage, so I don't know if you're going to see those turns a lot. Okay. That's a good point. Well, see, this is why I have you guys. This is why I, this is why I asked you guys to be on this with me because <laughs> you guys bring all these things that, like, you know, me, me personally, like, uh, sometimes I'll come up with some great things, but you guys point out things that others or might, like I said, myself included, don't see. And I hope everyone who's listening can appreciate that as much as I do. Uh, what are we going to give this, though? I still think it's a four. I'm giving it a four, and I think if he pans out, he is a hard five. That's fair. I can I can stand behind that. Uh, we only have a few more guys. We have about four more. Latov, Latov, uh, Father. When Latov enters the field, choose one card named Chelenka or a card named Yuri in your break zone. Play it on the field. Uh, for its cost, uh, I don't think... I, I like the cards that it brings back, right? Because those cards are very strong. But I think it's... Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I think because it's a five for a three or a four makes me... don't. I, I don't want to appreciate it. It's probably a one of in my opinion, but... Uh, maybe you guys will disagree with me. Uh, Chris? Yeah, it's definitely a one of because I think being able to just put Yuri back on the field is – I pay I would pay six to put Yuri back on the field because that card's insane. And the fact that this guy kind of feeds into that is w worth the price of admission alone. I think he's good. Okay. Adam? Yeah, I agree with you too. I think it's basically just a one of. However, like Chris said, like Yuri, I think Yuri's an insane card, and I, and I think he's an insane card in Mono Fire. Um, so I think you're gonna see this guy's like a one of in there. And then yeah, if you're playing what Wind Fire Chilinka, like uh, Yuri, this is obviously gonna be in there too. And also keep in mind, if you're playing Meath and you don't need this guy, you can pitch him and go grab Edgar. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are we going to give this, though? A three or a two? I think it, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, a, it's only a three because of the cards that he picks are good. But okay. yeah, he, yeah. He, he's a one of at most, I think. I agree with you on there. Okay. Uh, all right, so we said we gave this three out of five. Uh, we can move on now. Uh, Lulu. Uh, when Lulu enters the field, choose a forward. You may put one back up other than Lulu you control into the break zone. If you do so, deal it 7,000 damage. Uh, I like this card. Um, but I want to hear more of what you guys have to say. <laughs> oh, you want to uh, start adding? Anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. I, I like this card a lot, too. Um, I think this is another one of the cards that fired up that's, like, pretty amazing. Uh, now you can get rid of your backups that you already got value out of, like Meath, for example, that we just went over. Um, any kind of tutor. Uh, even the previous card, Latoff, like, I don't care about that anymore. It did its job. Now I'm going to break it and throw it at you and deal 7K. And 7K is a good amount. For a two CP backup, even though you're breaking a backup to deal, like that's a pretty good amount of damage. Uh, and then if you want to stack this with like Warmack or whatever, now it's dealing nine K, which is going to kill basically anything. So I like her a lot. You could tap the one that you're going to break for Warmack to make her deal nine K. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't know. So I guess one of the things I want to say about this is that fire. I feel like fire has all these good backups. But I feel like they just keep crippling themselves. Like, I don't want to say maybe crippling is too strong of a word, but you have to lose value to try to, I guess, do something, right? Like, yep. like Furion had that problem too, right? He was, you can give him Brave and First Strike, I believe, by removing a backup. And Lulu is mm -hmm. kind of that same thing. When Yeah, in the long run, I guess later in the game, it helps you um, clear up your boards and maybe take something away. Or, or I guess rotate your backups in for whatever you need, um, like the Meath or whatever, or Latov. 
Um, but I feel like fire needs more value out of these cards than, you know, sticking, like leaving it in place. Uh, Chris? Yeah, I actually, I, I'm glad you said that because um, I, I really love this card and it, it, it feels great. The only the only problem I have, and this is kind of relevant through most of the fire backups, like the two drops that we've talked about and the two drops that, that fire's running right now, they feel bad to play on turn one. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I, I love Lulu. I, I I love this card. I hate when it's the only two drop or like I draw this and like me and they're my two drop backups in my hand. I'm like, man, I don't need to get I don't need to get the value off of these. And you don't want to play Lulu for no value because then you won't get to play another one. Exactly. So like that that's the that's the downside, but man, the fact that, you know, when she's a very much a mid game play where you wanna where your backup you're at like three or four backups and you wanna start cleaning it up so you can play more. Like I use her in uh, my Earth, uh, my Earth Fire deck to break the Ralbon that I've already used to play another one, or to break break the Meath to play another one. Um, yeah. So I, I think she's very good in like a mid rangey deck. You just you feel bad playing her early, and that that's a, a downside to me. And it's it's a pretty big one sometimes, especially when these backups are starting to become your primary two drops. Yeah, I agree. See, uh, so what are we gonna give this card? Uh, I think she's a. I think she's a solid three. Um, yeah, I think she's a solid three. Solid three, Adam. Can you? Agree? Yeah, yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah. Okay. Let's give it a three. Three blitz balls and move on. Mm -hmm. uh, rain. Uh, Ex person rain enters the field. You may search for a category waft monster and add it to your hand. Uh, the category waft monsters you control gain a thousand power. It's, uh, three six k. Uh, I don't know, Adam. What do you think? Um. So. She's not bad. So basically, she gets you a card, so really it's like a 1 CP 6K, te technically speaking, I guess. Uh, the problem is, like, we talked about Frit earlier, and we're kind of like, we'll go up on him because Ifrit's aren't good. And so she's relying on him being good, and he's relying on Ifrit being good. So, like, all those things have to, like, fall into place for her to be good, and I don't think that's the case right now. But again, if where if get printed and then Frit becomes good, then you have to look at this card and then this card might become good. So, but right now I don't think she's good at all. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, Chris. Yeah, I agree with that a hundred percent. I think she's only as good as the sum of her parts and she's a card that, you know, in the future as more, more WAF stuff is printed, she is one to definitely look back on. Uh, I, I think she's one you want to look, look at in the future. <coughs> not, I don't think there's enough to make her good. And the all the the only walk monsters are the ones we got this set, right? Yes, uh, I believe yes. I believe so too. Okay, so uh, I guess until we see further more, she can stay at a two for now. Yeah, I agree. Because she is cheap when because considering you get a card back, so yeah, we'll leave her at a two mm -hmm. at two for now. Um, the next one is Warrior of Light. So we're moving into the last two cards of the set, and these are actually the ones that came in the new Heroes and Villains or whatever structure deck. Uh, mm -hmm. Warrior of Light, if you control four or more forwards, uh, Warrior of Light gains haste. When Warrior of Light enters the field, all forwards you control gain 2,000 power until the end of the turn. Um, I think it's cool, obviously, the fact that it says control four, uh, four or more forwards, that includes himself. So, you know, dropping him a little mm -hmm. when your board's um, already going wide, it gives him the power. Um, he's a good late game push. I like these. Reminds me of, um, who else does mm -hmm. this? Zach did this. And then uh, I believe Gado, one of the early Gados, did this. The, the mm -hmm. power buff or whatever. Um, how do you? What do you? Th what do you guys think about this card? Oh, uh, Chris. Uh, uh, yeah, I love him. Um, a well, a, he's a war he's a warrior of light, which is good. He's a two drop, which means you know he'll get, get his he'll get the haste if you play him in like a Golbez deck because you're gonna drop four forward, so boom, he'll have haste. Um, he'll um, he plays off of uh, Aegis. So if you drop Aegis, he'll be, if you drop him with Aegis, he'll be a 7k brave and potentially haste if you have other forwards. Um, one of the other things too, and this is, you know, just kind of off topic with the starter cards, you know, they, the day before the set released, you, people started to find out that the foil starter cards are just as rare as rare legendaries. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Yeah, they're, they're always like that. I remember the Jill Nabots foil, the, the original Opus 1 ones when they came out were always like 15 bucks or something like that. So. Yeah, they're still up there. They're still up there too, right? I can't yeah. imagine what these are at right now. But this card, fantastic. Yeah, I, and you know, it, I think it's funny that you, you brought that up, the gold best thing. So dropping him and Soul, right? Because Soul's also a two-drop. Don't they both get haste, right? 
Yeah, but they're both oh. fired, so you couldn't drop them off. Gold oh, gold. that's right, that's right. Uh, that's the, that was the one thing my goal was. See, you always forget these little things. Um, and so, Adam, what do you think about this card? Yeah, I, I like this card a lot, too. Um, even outside, like, the Warrior Life stuff. I think he's good at all stages of the game. Um, like, he's obviously good early because he costs two. Uh, if you play him with four forwards, he's going to have haste, and then he's going to buff your board to push forward. Um, he's a great, great small baby phoenix target. Like, mm -hmm. for, like basically a combat trick, because now you're going to do 2k to their board, and you're going to buff all your guys by 2k. And if he's your fourth forward, he's going to have haste. So... Seems, I, I like him as, seems as a, good. he's like probably one of the best <laughs> Phoenix targets, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. I like that. Uh, I, I can get behind both of those things. Uh, so what are we giving him? A four? I feel like we're strongly behind this guy, right? Yeah, I, I, I think he's worth being a four, honestly. I really do. Yeah, his job, too, also puts him over the top, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. I, I love the art, too. <laughs> it's really... Yeah. Um, and we're down to the last one. Uh, Furion. Uh, this is the other one, the other exclusive from the structure deck. EX Burst. When Furion enters the field, choose a forward. Your opponent uh, choose a forward opponent controls. Deal two thousand damage for each forward you control, up to three forwards. Um, possible six K damage. Uh, I, I do like the value in this card. It's super cheap, and six K um, for a two drop isn't bad either. Adam, mm -hmm. what do you think about this card? Um, yeah, again, another really good baby phoenix target. Uh, if he's your third forward, he's gonna also deal six K, so that's gonna be eight K to something. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you stack it on top, you could War Mac him to get 8k if you're running that kind of deck. Um, he reminds me a lot of like a cheap legendary VV, right? Mm -hmm. Except he's not really reliant, he's more reliant on your board, less on their hand, which I think is better right now. Um, oh, and, and guess what else you can drop him off of? Oh, Aegis, yeah. Aegis. You can also play him off Aegis, and then he's immediately going to deal 4k. Uh, assuming that you have nothing else on board. So mm -hmm. I, I like him a lot, yeah. Chris? Oh, dude, I, I think this card's excellent as well. Um, I was I was a little harsh on it when I first saw it until I just thought of all the different applications. Um, he's great in conjunction with a lot of other burn cards. I think he, uh, again, another great baby phoenix target. I think he's awesome in Fire Ice in conjunction with, uh, like, play this guy or, like, play a Sid Reigns, then play this guy, play a Laswell, then play this guy. Like, you're, you're, this guy's going to do some work in, like, real pingy decks, and I think he's excellent. I like that too. Uh, I think he's. Uh, I think he's gonna actually see a lot of play. I don't know if if I can yeah. warrant giving him a five, but he's definitely a, a strong four because he's gonna. I don't want to say he's gonna fix fire, but he has a lot of potential to do, to regulate the amount of damage going that fire has a chance to put out, like on uh, turns and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Would you, would you guys agree. agree he's a four? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Four blitz balls out of five. Four blitz balls. <laughs> All right, uh, so we've gone through over all the cards, and I just want to ask you guys a couple questions. Um, uh, I'll start with you, Adam. Uh, so which color is, uh, do you think is going to go best with Fire uh, now that Opus 7 is live and we're moving forward into uh, all the experimenting? What color do you think it's going to go best with? Uh, I, if you had I to pick say, one. I want to say Earth. Earth. Uh, the, I think the Fire Earth like where like deck that Chris has been talking about is, is pretty strong. Um, and, and it definitely got a lot to set, and there's still a lot of cards I feel like that didn't see play because that archetype wasn't as strong prior. So I, I think Earth. Okay, and what about you, uh, Chris? Uh, well, just I, I'm going to be a little biased because, you know, it's tough because I want to say Fire Earth because I've been playing that Warrior of Light deck for, you know, a couple weeks now. But you know I'm always looking to get Fire Ice back into fight shape, mm -hmm. and I think... I think when the dust settles, I think fire ice will be the better combination for fire. Um, but right now I'm having so much fun playing earth fire. Okay. I, I agree with you though. I think fire ice is where, uh, where we need to be checked, where we really need to be looking into it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I doesn't necessarily have to be like where it light or anything, but I think the, the synergy that fire and ice provide make it, a, it's going to make it a really strong deck again and not just aggro mm -hmm. either. I'm thinking like tempo, um, but that's just me. Uh, the next question is actually going to be, uh, out of all the cards we just went over, which card do you think is going to make the biggest impact? Uh, I don't know what you guys felt like was the biggest fire card, I guess, from the last set. Um, but I think it might have been, I guess, low-key Zell. Uh, so what mm -hmm. do you guys think? The, the Which card is going to make the biggest impact from the set, from the fire cards? I think we probably both have the same answer on this one. <laughs> what is that then? Oh, that's Aegis. Aegis, Adam, do you agree? Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, I think it's also going to be Aegis. I think that card's really, really good. Um, if I if I had to pick a card different from him, I'd probably say the Furion or the Meath, maybe. Uh, I think Jack will see a lot of play, but I don't think he's going to have the effect that those other cards will have. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I can agree. I, I, actually, I was going to say Furion, um, but I wanted to say Jet. Like, a part of me wanted to say Jet. <laughs> uh, just because I think he's cool. Uh, or he has the, mm-hmm. like, the most unique kind of ability, I think. Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, Adam, you mentioned that you've been playing Mono Fire, I think. Or you told me. I don't yeah. even remember if we, you mentioned it, but you were telling me earlier uh, uh, about Mono Fire deck. What does that look like, and what have you played to... What is it good against, and what is it bad against? Really So, quick. I've tried it... Uh, it's been through a different, uh, few different builds. Uh, at first, I was like, okay, I'm going to play Facilia, because Facilia plays very well with Jekt, and I'm just going to get Jekt down for one, and then start dealing that point of damage. Um, but then the more I played with Yuri, I think Yuri is just an insane card in Mono Fire. Um, and I think it overshadows Facilia. And you don't want to get too clunky, I think, with a bunch of light cards. So I'm starting to, like, kind of push Facilia to the side and just run Yuri with a lot of, like, the other big fire cards. Mm-hmm. Um, I still am trying to find, like, a middle ground on, like, if I still want to do, like, self damage stuff and things like that. But cards like Aegis is still strong. Jack's still in there. Uh, obviously, like, Zande and things. It's definitely more of, like, a a higher end build, but yeah, I've had a lot of success with it so far. How many of these uh, Opus Seven cards are you actually playing in there? Like, which cards made it better? Like, so it's, what do you, Jet? It's a fair amount. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, Aegis, Jet, Samurai, Soul are all in there. Lawn is in there. Lulu's in there. Latov's in there. Meep is in there. Wow. Okay. Um, I've ran Begavin, but uh, he's coming in and out a few times, and I still want to try uh, Fury on a Warrior Light as well. Okay. See, well, that's good to know. Uh, all right, so everyone, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I want to give the RBA guys, um, returners just a second here. Uh, is there anything you want to tell the, the, our audience today? Chris? So, yeah, or, ahead, Chris. yeah, that Chris started this one. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I know, uh, you know, we've got the call. Well, first of all, thanks for having us. You know, it's, it's always great when we do, you know, videos together because, you know, I like y'all's perspective. You know, you're one, one of the coolest guys we've had a chance to meet. You know, you, the whole Triple Triad. Um but I, you know, keep in mind we do have the Cauldron Cup coming up this weekend, and that's going to be a huge event. And I know some of the Florida guys have talked about coming up, so you yeah, know, maybe, we're still maybe hoping. we'll get to see you there. We're still hoping, yeah. <laughs> uh, Adam, anything else? Yeah, I mean that's that's the big event coming up. We obviously have the Supernova Cup after that, which should be pretty yeah. fun. That's like the two deck format. But I think the Cauldron Cup. Is gonna almost be like a small crystal cup, and I'm really looking forward to that. Um, that's thrown by the Turks and those guys, and uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be a really good event. So I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Uh, well, also I want to congratulate Chris because I heard he's gonna be doing the commentating for the reunion, right? Yeah, yeah. Me and me and Matt Rice, uh, the the one two combo. It's gonna be the it's gonna be the best crossover, uh, the best team up since uh, Scooby Doo and the Globe Trotters. So. <laughs> I don't know, man. John Cena teamed up with Scooby Doo too. Right? No, he did. It might be, it might be <laughs> better than that. Uh, this is why I love having you guys on here. All right. Well, thanks so much for coming by. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, please check out the other reviews and please stop by the RBA Returners uh, YouTube channel and their Facebook page. I'll have links for you.